So, how do professional designers use Canva? Hmm, <gasps> I know, I'm a professional designer for about 17 years. Uh, so what I've gone and done is I've dug out my eight best tips, my workflow hacks that gets me professional results inside of Canva. Let's go. All right, tip number one, image mastery. Look at this, before, <gasps> after, before, after. This is before, <gasps> that's after, before, after. Images like a boss. So first of all, I'm gonna drag in an image. It's a photo at my local car show. And I have two of them. We'll have the before, and then I'm gonna hold down my option key, alt key on a PC, and I make a duplicate of it. That's not the tip. What we're gonna do is have it selected. Let's go to edit. Let's zoom in, command plus, 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 plus. Move over a little bit. And we're gonna click on this one called adjust. Very few people actually click this button. Now there's lots to go through, but the good stuff's right here at the bottom. This one here, so under texture, watch this. Kind of a nice image-ish, but watch this. Clarity is the magic one, ready? All the way up, <laughs> okay? Even all the way up, oh, so good. Look, before, after, before, after. Often though, not as intense. And the other one that comes up a little bit is sharpness, before, after. Oh, what do you think? It's cool, huh? An okay image, now a better image. All right, let's zoom right out. Hold Command Option uh, Zero on your keyboard or Control Alt Zero on your PC. Not the tip, but look at the difference. Oh, let's do another one together. Drag it on, drag out another one, holding either Option on a Mac Alt on a PC before you start dragging. Okay, and it will duplicate it out. That is not one of the tips, bonus tips. Let's zoom in, Command or Control Plus. Go to edit, adjust that we don't hit, go down to the good stuff, crank up clarity a bit, kind of somewhere in there, sharpness up a little bit. Zoom back out, uh, command option zero on a Mac, control alt zero on a PC. Okay, and look at that, before, after. It is that last 80%. All right, let's stack them up. Good photo, great photo. <laughs> good photo, great photo. Oh, we're awesome. All right, what is next? All right, tip number two, it's mock-ups. Flat logos are good, but when you mock them up on stuff, oh, it brings your designs to life, and it impresses your clients, your customers, your cousins, I mean, <laughs> customers. Everything looks better mocked up on stuff. So I've got a blank page here. I'm gonna to go to Elements. I'm gonna scroll down until we find the one called Mock-ups. I'm gonna to go to See All, and lots of cool mock-ups. They're easy to use, kind of. I'm gonna use this bottle here. I'm gonna hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key a PC to drag it from all directions. And if I grab my logo here and I go copy and I paste it into this page, it is not gonna go in. It doesn't go in naturally because I made this thing in Canva. It's all editable text and that doesn't go in. So what I need to do is grab the same thing and cut it, put it on its own page here. I'm gonna make it nice and big using that same option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. Okay, and drag it nice and big. And then I'm gonna export this page. Okay, so page 11, share download, and I'm gonna say not all pages, I'm gonna say just the current page, off, on. Page 11, let's click done, download, wait some time, stick mine on the desktop, hit save. Now let's bring in that PNG, where are you? On the desktop, there it is all by itself, can you see hidden? I tidied up my desktop before you saw. <laughs> it can get messy. What I need to do is drag it in, I can actually just drag it straight on there. <gasps> no, it didn't work. <laughs> let's drag them in, and, <gasps> Boom, look how cool that is. Double click it, I'm gonna scale mine down a little bit, move it to the bottom, hit save changes. Oh, look how fancy we are. I'm gonna speed mock up a bunch of other ones. I don't know about you, but everything just feels more considered when it's laid out and seen in kind of other applications. It shows you care. All right, tip number three is how to pick colors, especially when you've already got like an existing brand color or some color that you're working with, how to pick colors that go along with it. That can be tricky. Um, a bonus tip, okay, so tip 3.5 is if you wanna look like a professional designer, all you need to do is buy a Pantone color book or a Royal color book, any sort of color book, and just leave them lying around. They're just color swatch books, okay? 
it's just a good physical way to pick colors. But if you leave them lying around <laughs> and you make sure there's post-it notes hanging out of them, even if you don't know how to use them, you make it look, <laughs> make it look like you know what you're doing. So if you've got an existing color, me, I'm working with a client that has a Pantone color here. We'll let's start there. Let's convert our Pantone color into a color that we can use inside of Canva and then find some matching colors for it. Tip number three, pick in colors. All right, so you might know the color code already. I'm using a Pantone color and I just Googled and clicked on the very first uh, Pantone to hex. Hex is the color code that we want. So I've typed it in 7577C. This is the hex code. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to go to Canva's website, not in the actual Canva app. Okay, and I'll put links to these all in the description. But we're looking for the color wheel and over here we can paste it in. And look at that. Oh, defaults to complementary color that matches it. You could copy it. What I like to do is grab a screenshot. Okay, on Mac it's Command Shift 4. On PC, I am not sure. I think it's just print screen. What I like to do is I've got this design template here. I'm going to drag in my screenshot. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it and say, apply these colors from the screenshot. And bam, <laughs> it's cool. Look at that. It applies both my primary and secondary color. Right click and you can keep shuffling through that and it will keep having a go at trying to implement them in different ways until you find one that you like. Oh, I like that one. A little bonus tip, if you are new to working with colors and sometimes you need to go into a meeting and be able to defend the color choice. Okay, let's say it's orange. There's another one in here in canva.com. Okay, there's a color meanings option. Okay, and if I type in the word orange and hit enter, okay, the cool thing about it is I'm gonna pick any of these little squares here and it's going to give me some dialogue and some reasoning about what orange is. Scroll down, look at this, it is fresh youthful creative color. It's the type of language that you build up over time as an experienced designer, giving meaning to color. We'll probably had it where we're working with somebody and they're like, I don't like green. <laughs> You're like, okay, <laughs> it's, it's good for your business and brand, but his daughter doesn't like green. I find being able to go in and be able to defend the reasoning behind a color. Okay, maybe less defending it and more empowering the client to understand why we've got this really quite bright orange. It's really well documented here on this Canvas site. Bonus trick. If you're like, oh, complimentary, but I want triad analogous. All these kind of names up here are quite useful for you to learn as well as you're going through. Let's say we like this kind of like mono uh, group of colors. They're just kind of lighter and darker versions of that same color. I'm going to do another screenshot. Drag it into Canva and I'm going to do the same thing again and look, oh, cool. Oh, done. <laughs> Love that one. You can find colors and screenshot them from anywhere. Just dump them into Canva and then just right click and say apply to page. Do like it. All right, next tip. Quickly before we move on though, uh, how good are these tips? If you didn't know some of them, guess what? You are a perfect person for my design, nope, my Canva Design Essentials course. Uh, we got thousands more tips like this. Um, so yeah, uh, link in the description for that if you want to go further with your Canva skills. Come join me for the full course. But for now, quit with the sales pitch, Dan. Get on with the tips. All right, let's do it. All right, tip number four. Probably the most boring, but in my eyes, probably the most exciting when it came to being a designer in Canva. It's something called layouts inside of presentations. Let me show you. Prepared to be over or underwhelmed, depending on how many presentations you make. Um, I've just thrown all this in. I've got an image. I've just thrown it on the page. I've put zero effort into layout. But watch this. If I go to design and I go to this tab you've never clicked, let's click on layouts. Watch what's going to happen. It's going to say, I'm going to read all the content and go, would this be a good layout? Oh, yes. Look, the line, the text, it's changed sizing. It's laid out the image. Let's go back into it. It's going to have another little look. Look at all the different layouts. Do you like this one? Do you like this one? Do you like this one? Oh, it's in a circle. Oh, I do like that one. No, this one. Oh, can you see how easy and quick that is? It's in a squiggle inside of a square. That's in the wrong spot, but I can, I can move that around afterwards. Man, I love design layouts. I can do it on my own, but it takes a lot of time and I don't think anybody cares how we got here, as long as it looks good. All right, that's tip three. It's not the most sexiest tip, but probably the one that saves me the most time as a designer. All right, the rest of them are more exciting. Let's go. All right, another tip that changed my life as a designer when I kind of worked it out is this terminology. It's called font pairing. Who spent ages doing this? Select the font and then spent ages doom font scrolling <laughs> and clicking a million things and never actually getting the thing you like. Let me know in the comments if you've lost more, more than an hour of your life doing this. I do still like doing it. I don't know why. 
So many fonts. The shortcut is just to Google Canva font pairing. And it's the shortcut. Find other designers who have put cool fonts together and copy them. Whether it's Google Images or Pinterest, I found this one and I was like, oh, ooh, I like this one. Nord Bold and whatever that one is. So all I do is I go, all right, I'm looking for that kind of look, not this old worldy one. I'm going to go, you two are going to now be, click on the font, and I'm going to go in here and type in Nord. There it is there. There's a few different sizes. I want the bold one. Oh, maybe the heavy one. Oh, I do like it. I'm going to grab these two. This other one was called Vintage Moon. Oh, Vintage Rotter. There's a free one. Vintage Moon is a paid one. It's all right. I'm going to turn it to lowercase and maybe just do a little bit of customization. This needs a capital. And with it all selected, I'm going to go to spacing and I'm going to turn down the letter spacing. It's quite wide. And I'll make it bigger. And change the year. Last one. I'm going to go for a Nord what? Light? Regular. Get a touch smaller, move it up, and look at that. Before, after. A very different look, and for me, a super good shortcut to get the feel that I want from a font and find another font that kind of pairs with it nicely. Bigger and up. There we go, font pairing. All you gotta do is remember that term. All right, it's time for tip number six. <laughs> I should write these down. Anyway, this is a good one, look got an image but we need to make a big long banner out of it imagine if there was a magic way we could bam just create more background oh so good and if you join me <laughs> it goes from good to really weird <laughs> oh let's stick to the good one all right this tip is called magic expand let's get in there all right the next tip uh you've been asked to create a facebook uh cover image and it's this really weird shape long and thin it might be tall and skinny Advertising leaderboards, pop-up stands, they all have one thing in common. Uh, all images are taken in this aspect ratio, and you're like, oh, they don't fit. But I'm gonna show you a little trick, watch this. So we get to here, and you're like, bah, bah. <laughs> it doesn't fit, what am I gonna do over here? I'm gonna go to edit, and I'm gonna go to Magic Studio, and along here is Magic Expand. I'm gonna click on that one, and I'm just gonna drag the edge to the edge. And then I'm gonna hit a magic expand. I'm gonna kick back. It's gonna take a few seconds, actually probably about 30 seconds. I'll be back, you ready? <whistles> Bam! Oh, this one's really good. Look at the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a weird bird. <laughs> oh, this one looks weirder. <laughs> uh, sometimes it hallucinates and just kind of doesn't quite get it. I'm not sure what she's doing. All right, that's kind of weird. <laughs> All right, so it does work. Sometimes it has a few problems. So it does work. It works really good with like natural organic shapes. Less good with complex um, like architecture and sometimes throws in a mutant bird. Or you just need something portrait where a shot landscape. Oh, try the magic expand, super awesome. All right, tip number seven, changing colors. This can get you out of a jam. We've got a red ribbon, bam, it's green. It could be any color you want. We've got what looks like a strawberry cheesecake. Bam, we made it coffee colored, caramel. Either way, there is a trick to change colors inside of images. Let me show you how. If I have the image selected, I'm gonna to go to edit. And if I go into adjust, right down the bottom here, there's this one here, color edit. I wanna grab this color here and drag it left and right. Look at that. I want a pink one. Come on, Dan, pink, where are you? And I want this one, this top one here, not to be this weird fluorescent color. I want it to be, I don't know, coffee. Let's go to edit, let's go to adjust. And down here, let's grab the pinky color. And let's get it into the orange space. I'm gonna grab the brightness and lower it down till it looks kinda like chocolatey coffee cake. Cool, huh? No extra apps, just built straight into Canva. Whoa, oh, can you feel it? We're getting good at Canva. I can feel it inside you. You're like, yeah, man, I'm doing stuff. All right, let's do one more. All right, tip number eight. It's getting our videos from images. You're making an Instagram reel and everyone else has got video. You've only got lame old photos. This is a way of adding a bit of video life to your images. So I've got a bunch of images. You wait there, I'm gonna scale them all up. All right, so just a bunch of images stacked on top of each other. And what we can do is, we're gonna show this thing called duration. You have to have started your document. Can you see up here, it's got a little video icon. I started with a story. 
you don't want to start with a print document. So we've got our duration. The next trick is watch this. I can right click any of these images and I can show, show the timing element or show element timing. <laughs> okay, and what happens is this guy here is appearing for the full five seconds. I want him to only appear for this long. Then this guy with him selected, I'm going to say you are going to appear only this long, but maybe a little bit this way. Can you see what I'm doing here? This one goes for about a second. Then this other guy starts. Now I'm going to go along here and grab that guy. Instead of being the entire time, I'm going to say you fit in here. Got one more image. So what I might do is with this bottom one selected, okay, it's kind of like the page. I'm going to make you a little bit longer, about six seconds, so that I can say you're a bit smaller. And then this last guy, don't be the whole length, just be this little, little chunk here. He's very short. I should space those out better. So that's one thing. Let's hit play. It's just going to cycle between them. The magic really happens is when I select one of them or all of them, let's just select them all. So I'm holding shift and clicking them all. And if you go up to here to animate and you can use any of these, but there's some special ones for images where we suggested. Okay, photo flow, photo rise. I like photo zoom. I'm going to click on that one and it's just going to zoom in nicely. Watch this. Let's hit the full on preview and look, we've got stuff with transitions and kind of zoominess. All of my images are not quite tall enough. That's okay. It's a great way of getting kind of video type engagement with just boring old images. Oh, nice. I'm going to throw on a quick bit of text and do the same thing. Animate and I'm going to use block. Look at us. Let's preview it. Actually, let's test it on the phone. All right, I do love testing on the phone. In the Canva app, you just open it up and you can hit play in here. Oh. Things just look so, so much better on the phone, off the big screen. Oh, it's nice. All right, and two things. <laughs> I've just noticed it doesn't say visit at all. It says the, yeah. <laughs> You've noticed the whole time. I've only just realized. And I've also realized Manny has hairy hands. He does indeed. Look at that. Anyway, can't spell hairy hands. Hopefully some useful tips. All right, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this. I might make some more of these if there's enough demand, if you guys are digging it. But if you're like, oh, I really want to go further and I like hanging out with Dan, you can join me for my Canva Design Essentials course. Um, you get given a class brief, okay, like a design brief to work through. You get given class projects. There is a quiz. There's a certificate. There's teacher support, uh, design challenges, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you get to hang out even more. Uh, link for that is in the description. Uh, but that is it. That is the end. I hope you found value here and I might see you again. Maybe see you in the class. Bye.